Hello, welcome to lesson three. Here we have the software installed and licensed, and we're going to cover the general settings and give a basic overview for the logic of the drive image scan profiles. So here we are at the home page of drive image. Uh, you'll see that at the left we have all of our profiles, which currently there are none. Here in the center, this is where we'll start to create the settings and to add new profiles. Um, and then also here I have a couple administrative functions which we can go through. Um, if you want to import profiles or settings, you can do it here. It's always a good idea to back up your profiles and your settings if you're moving a server or even if you're doing an install or an update. Uh, here in tools, I've got a couple different things that I'm going to want to go through and set up. Um, a new function in version 6 is a check for update function where you can actually use this to go out and see if there's a newer release of drive image. Um, a couple more important things here if you need to get back into the licenses you can do that. Um, device management will cover that. Uh, and then here in options this is where we can go through some of the more administrative functions of drive image. So here it's going to find the Active Directory server for us automatically. Um, this is based off whatever AD server we're currently connected to. Um, if you want to ask the user for just a simple authentication, for instance, if we're only going to log them in based off their value of the pager field or something in AD, we can do that. Um, with shared login, this is where we would set up, for instance, uh, a shared login with drive print. So if drive print were on the same server, then we would want to point it to this server so it'll actually get all of its user information from drive print and you see that that grays out the Active Directory server. So it's totally dependent on drive print at that point. Um, so we're going to go back here. Um, if we go into advanced, we can enable the debug log. That's always good if we're doing troubleshooting. Um, also down here, uh, an important thing to take note of is the multiprocessor setting. If you're doing a big environment and you have four or eight or even more CPUs on the server, you can set it so that all of those CPUs can be used at once. Um, what this means is here I have four CPUs in the server so that means I can use four to process four jobs simultaneously. If I turn this off then drive image will only process one job at a time. So depending on the volume, depending on the server resources, you might want to take a look at that. Uh, a new function here also in version 6 is you can set the SNMP read community. Drive Image will also ask you if you want to create email notifications. Uh, this is a very smart thing to do if it's a larger, more important environment because this is going to let the administrator know that something is down or that something is not working. You may get error scans from time to time based off user error or uh, server resources being not running or whatever. But if you set this up and the, the administrator starts getting an email one after another, uh, it lets them know right away that something is down and they need to take a look at it. So in a high uptime environment, I definitely recommend setting this notifications up. So Drive Image operates on the basis of scan profiles. Each scan profile is given a name and a description as optional. Uh, and you can also configure which type of profile it is. Either it is a embedded profile, which means that it runs on the device panel of one of our supported devices, or it is a hot folder profile, which means that Drive Image watches a folder, processes a file, and then sends it off somewhere else. So in this case, we're going to start off with an embedded profile, um, and I'm just going to call it scan to folder. It's going to be very simple. The user is just going to pick a folder and scan to it. So you see here that all my profiles will be on the left side. I can also disable them if I want to keep them on deck uh, to use later. And also rename them and delete them. Um, each profile has four main sections. It's got a, let's see, I'm just going to enable it again. It's got an input, processing, output, and options. And here we're going to go through some of the input functions. What this means is what types of things are we asking the user to do here at the panel? Often uh, we want to keep this very simple for the user. One of the benefits of Drive Image is that you can use it to standardize naming conventions of files and to keep the steps for the user very simple 
and regimented so that the document can be found later. Um, we're going to do something very simple here. We're just going to say name the file. So the user is going to name the file and that's a text field. And we're going to add another one and we're going to call it uh, browse folders. This is where the user is going to place the file. And you see here I have a lot of different options. I can do a text, a checkbox, we can query personal exchange contacts, list field for file naming. Um, in this case we're going to do a folder selection. We can also do database lookups, browse SharePoint, browse other document management systems, and show SharePoint lists. Um, in this case we're going to make this mandatory because we want the user definitely to pick a destination. So that's going to enable my output for me. And here with browse folders, I'm going to just start the user off here, in this case, let's say, in the C drive. Um, there you could also browse for a network location. And if you look here, you see that it's going to happen as the service account. Um, we could also use this to prefer the logged on user's credentials or use the logged on user's credentials. So in processing here, I have all the things that are going to happen to that document. We'll go through these a little in more detail later, but you see I have uh, things like barcode recognition, blank page removal, Bates numbering, separate documents for batch scanning, image processing, um, convert files, and actually, let's see, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, okay, and see I also have zonal OCR and drive DRM. Um, in this case, I'm going to set up uh, a couple options for the user. We're going to let them pick between a searchable PDF and a TIFF and a Word file. So here I've selected to make them uh, selectable versus using the same for each one. So this means that the user will be able to pick at the panel which type of file they want it to be. In the output here, uh, this is where the file is actually going to go. I have a lot of different options here, and I can enable one or more at the same time. Um, file options, I have uh, Drive, DM, I can scan to uh, email, servers, Lotus, uh, Exchange, Exchange 365, SMTP, and Google Apps. Um, I also have uh, different fax servers. Um, in some cases, we have a built-in connector, in other cases, uh, we can pick a different type of fax server and create a transform file to send to it. Uh, I also have SharePoint, OneDrive, DocuShare, WorldDocs, and then here uh, I can actually set up print back. So in this case file output is enabled. Um, what I'm going to do here is go and select uh, the destination. So I can either browse and make a static destination or if I open up the variables and functions dialog I can pick in input fields here um, what was selected here by the user, so that browse folders variable. Um, for file name generation, I'm going to set it so that the user, whatever they entered there, um, that's going to be the file name. And you'll notice something new here, and it's this variable system. Uh, whenever you're creating a profile, you have access to all these variables to use to create the destination, or to name the file, or to set the metadata. Um, pretty much anything that we have available to us, including Active Directory fields, um, timestamps, the device name, the device location. Uh, you can even do scripting and conditional stuff here. And that's all going to determine what's going to be set, in this case, as the file name, but it could also be as the destination or anything. So I'm going to save that profile. Here in the options, I can lock this profile down based off a user or a group. I can also choose which devices this profile is going to be shown on or which that it's not going to be shown on. Um, I can set default scanner options. Uh, I can also set up a browse to print profile, which means that the file will be printed back to the machine after the scan happens. And here I can also set uh, it to always show the advanced button on the screen and then also we can send an email whenever a scan is successful. 
So the next important thing for you to take a look at here is the simulator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a license here for all these devices. And I'm going to simulate in the browser what drive image is going to look like on the panel. So if you look here, it opens it up in the browser. And this is actually the application that the user is going to see on the screen of the MFP when they select drive image. This is very helpful because you can actually configure the profiles and see how they're going to work without having to walk back and forth to the device. So in this game, in this case, I'm going to name the scan. I'm going to browse my C drive and I'm actually going to put it into the drive folder and I'm going to convert it to a searchable PDF. Uh, so here I'm going to hit scan. I could also hit advanced and configure some of the scan settings. Um, and I'm going to finish it off. And here, this is where the scan will actually get kicked off at the device. But I can also browse and select a file to use in the simulator. Or if I just hit finish, it'll put a test file there. So that's being processed. Um, I'm going to just browse to my C drive and go to the drive folder. And that file should show up here as a searchable PDF after it's been converted and processed by drive image. So there's my new scan. Uh, it's a searchable PDF. It could have been a Word file or whatever if the user selected something different. And that's our basic scan profile. So they can be as specific or as generic as you'd like. Uh, typically, they fall into two main categories. Um, personal scan profiles for each user. So scan to me, scan to my home folder, send an email, and then more functional profiles like accounts payable, things that are customized per each company or organization and what they need to do with these paper documents. So remember for each scan profile we have an input which is what's said about the document, we have a processing which is what happens to the document, an output which is where the document goes, and then options for uh, the general settings for that profile.